bottle of bullet rye. Nice. All right. So what's up? Now what? I don't know. I think we're just B Bottoms here. up? Yeah, let's go. Aaron, are you drinking? <laughs> This massive bottle that Danny got me for my birthday three years ago. Oh my god, you haven't got it yet? What's wrong with you? I had two kids. That's what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't ask you what happened to you. There's, I, I a, life, there's a life, guys. You have two kids. You're not going to be able to drink whiskey anymore. They're all asleep now. Aaron Noel 584. This is my brother. This is my brother Aaron. He is the <laughs> oldest, youngest. There's one in the middle named Daniel Rubin, who I think is also here. Um, maybe maybe if I can get him on here afterwards, you can see the different Rubin personalities here. The trifecta. Yeah. Do you want to so, the freezer? Yes, please. Sorry, we had a doorbell go off, and it was Froyo. It was one of those nights. I purposely um, sat here. Yeah. You know... I was actually thinking about the House of the Holy album cover because of that idiot trying to get money from Nirvana. I wonder if those girls are trying to see Jimmy Page. I, I always thought they were boys. Could be, man. 70s. Whatever. Yeah, so, well, I, I know. Question. Aaron, he knows. There. You have a question? Okay, go yeah. on. When yeah. are you coming to Brazil? <laughs> yeah, when Any are day now. Brazil? Let's go. So, I was going to say that I know everything about you. You know everything about me. So if anybody has questions for Aaron or for the two of us, now's the time because Aaron and I can bullshit on the phone, whether it's Whiskey Wednesday or not. Who runs? Who runs yeah, we don't know that. No. The Robert Plant, Plant's kids. You know. All of them? saw that in Houses of the in uh, Song Remains the Same and I was wondering that but I have to verify that. Weird. Uh Aaron, what do you play musically? What's your instrument of choice? What's your poison? I play a little bit of everything. I just notes come it's just getting notes out of my head out into whatever needs to be there. Aaron was actually, aside from our father, of course, Aaron was the first drummer in the family. And when I quickly surpassed him, he decided to move on to the guitar and the bass. And then you played guitar. And yeah. then I was like, fuck this, I'm out of here. I'm going to bass. Yeah. And then you went to bass and I was like, all right, I'll manage you. Yeah. Someone wants to have you guys are uh, <laughs> That's it. That's okay. So our names are uh, Aaron and Alon Rubin. Look at my face, not necessarily Aaron's. Look at my face and ask yourself that question one more time. Uh, Aaron, what's your favorite plugin? What's your go to? If I had to have like one plugin, it'd probably just be the Lo Fi? No. <laughs> probably the um uh plugin alliance SSL e channel. Aaron's a huge SSL guy, you know? Not really. It's just, it's just every time kind of a go to do looping one bar of something. Did you really wig out of the bottle? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to dirty up a glass. Yeah, that is lowbrow. You know, I have a real problem out of the bottle. <laughs> but um, whether you realize this or not, for the audio geeks out there, every time, if you want. A first class ticket to insanity. Listen to Aaron looping one bar of something and EQing it for 10 minutes. And it's always an SSL EQ. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore? No. No? Yeah. You've cut yourself off to EQing one bar for like two minutes, three minutes at a time? Yeah. I'm more <laughs> like a top down guy now. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. I have to say, um, for the people out there who have heard me mention my upcoming single, Chaos in Motion, Aaron did a lovely mix for it. Uh, and what was interesting about this mix, I should say, from my perspective, is that since I have relocated to L.A. and Aaron and I are not in the studio together at all times, I kind of dabble in rough mixing 
to kind of get my idea across. And I do things that are unorthodox, unconventional. And I'm not saying they are, they are right by any means, but I'm trying to get an idea across. And you have to find a way of translating that idea into something that works for the listener. So why don't you go ahead and tell people what it's like getting my rough mix and having to mix the song properly and kind of getting to a place that we're both happy with. It's usually not difficult. It's just you have a certain vision sometimes. And, um, oh, Rob Kepchen, that would be um, the Old Navy boxer briefs. Yeah, I'm I really like them. H&M uh, boxer brief, yeah, myself. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, it's just trying to understand, you know, why you like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, then trying to feng shui everything to kind of fit, fit there. And in this case, you wanted the drums to sound harsh and abrasive on the top, which is kind of the... Um, what you try not to do, mm -hmm. usually. It's tough because... For the audio geeks out there, or anybody remotely interested in recorded music or mixing music, you may have an idea of what you want sonically. And the track we're talking about, as you guys will hear whenever it's out or whenever I happen to tease it, it has a slightly abrasive, aggressive drum sound, even though the song itself isn't aggressive. And me being fairly conservative in the way I record things, what I mean by that is, is that I don't want to go ahead and just distort all the drums on the way in because if I want to kind of take it back a bit, I can't. And I don't feel like I want to commit, commit, man. I don't, want to, commit. I don't want to commit that much. So <laughs> it then becomes a matter of, of kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit, but you also obviously want it to sound pleasant. And I don't, at this point in my life, I don't speak frequency. I speak... <laughs> Low, low, mid, mid, or, you know, high, mid, and uh, You just want it to sound like Pink Floyd. Yeah, Aaron's well-versed in actually speaking frequency <laughs> numbers in case, but uh, I'm not quite there yet. Except but, I, I don't use the term cycles. You don't use cycles, no. That's, no, that's a different level. Around 100 cycles. Yeah. What Vox amp model do y'all use for AVA? Um, Tom the one in amplitude. Yeah, true. <laughs> but Tom had the heritage reissues. Uh, I personally have, I have three boxes. I have two, one 90s AC30 top boost, which was English built and made pretty much by Marshall. I then have a 2004, which is the last year with the Alnico Blues, still made by Marshall slash Korg. And then I bought one of the anniversary edition AC-15s from a couple years ago, or a few years ago, which was the first Vox made in England since 2004. So there is that. Uh, well, does anybody have any other questions for, for Aaron while I got him here? Or at least his forehead and the top of his glasses? Sorry. I'm like trying to read these you questions. Know, Aaron's hmm. All right. Well, Wow. I don't think we got any here just yet, unless I'm missing. Well, it looks like Huli, Huli 008 was having a um, seizure while typing the message because he wasn't able to finish. Yeah. Recording her own music project That's a good question for you, Aaron. Like the handle. What was it? Top three picks for total beginners recording their own music. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Aaron, this was your tennis buddy when you were in high school? Whoa, the 008? You guys played tennis together? Who was it? I don't know. I just read it, but that is great. Um, whoa, the 008? I've been trying to get Aaron to play tennis for quite some time. He's still got the skills, although he's got... Uh, dude, you know who that is? I don't. It's Julio. Oh, we've cracked the code. All right. There no. we go. Well, anyway, back to what we were talking about. Keep peace on people. It, it was the, um, 
it was top three tips for somebody beginning recording music and logic at garage band so keep the da out of the picture because the top three tips will work for anybody explore that's it i thought you were gonna say something boring about gain staging which is very important no. oh yeah i mean just try not to distort things but just learn go on youtube and learn shit aaron what kind of shampoo and conditioner do you use i use um I actually use Neutrogena tea gel <laughs> for shampoo. I have sensitive scalps. I have sensitive scalp because I burned my hair, my scalp, dyeing it for like years. Wait, Aaron, let's uh, answer this question and we'll end on what? this because it's a gem. Aaron, what do you least like about Elon? <laughs> <laughs> um, how miserable he is. You're a miserable human being. <laughs> there you go, guys. You heard it here. But the, the the guy who should be on cloud nine is usually pissed off about something. Because you know what? When you're on cloud nine, you want to know why you're not on cloud 10. That's me. Oh, right, Sam? You know, <laughs> I just came up with that. I think I think that's a good one. All Thank right. for that Chasing Shadows EP. It actually does sound really good. I learned, heard that the other day, and I was like, damn. I mean, you know it's good when Aaron impresses himself. I, you know, sometimes I listen to stuff and I'm like, I don't even remember doing that. Uh, true story here, and you know this, but I'll tell the Angels and Airwaves fans here. When we were rehearsing for the the 2019 tour, it was the first song. And I must have either completely blocked out or completely forgotten playing drums on on that song or that EP. Well, because well, you just came in and... Um... Was it Chasing Shadows? Yeah, it was Chasing Shadows. It must have you, been... were, you were on tour with Nine Inch Nails. So it's like, I'm yeah. home for a day, and I have to learn these songs and record it, and I'm out. I'm on Elon's IG, Whiskey Wednesday. Can you stop bothering me? Is that my sister-in-law? That's your sister-in-law. I told you, the day you got married to Aaron, don't get in my way. Now you're... Yeah. In now she's in her way. Jesus. Yeah, I had to listen to it because Tom wants to play or try to play one of the songs from it for um Be careful because some age like Hey, you said on Whiskey Wednesday on this date last year and <laughs> why didn't you play it? So I careful. said maybe. Okay. And it's not overload, so it could be three other songs on there. Whoa, bro. <laughs> Whoa. Well, whenever Tom divulges what he wants to do, let me know so I'm prepared for rehearsals, even though I'm the one who makes the schedules. Good question. Okay, what is it? What year does humanity start significantly destroying itself? Uh, I would say 2000. <laughs> I think Y2K actually did ruin it. By the way, <laughs> he said it looks like we both have Adderall eyes. Elon doesn't have Adderall eyes, but I do because I no, take I, Adderall daily I, prescription for real. I have Lexapro eyes. That's why they're <laughs> I go to sleep at any time. No, those are just dead eyes. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, all right, dude. Not tomorrow, but you're always welcome here uh, uh, amongst us Whiskey Wednesday folks. Fine. Let me see if I can harness the power of Danny Rubin. Hold on. Oh, you should do all three of us. That's what I said. Wait, can we? Hold on. Yeah, add them in. I didn't know. Hold on. Do you think he'll come up in the middle? I don't know. Wait, I don't see him, but let me try to. Let me, ha how do I send an invite? Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, did it go? Wait, let's see if this works. <laughs> hold on. Let's yeah. No way. Look at that. The youngest one in curls. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, excellent Brady Bunch reference. I think that went over everybody's head. Yeah, but I thoroughly appreciate old. it. Okay, so. Guys, people, ladies and gentlemen, this is a generation of Reuben sons here. This is the Reuben sandwich here. This is, you know, this is the three of us. Our eight years, so I'm the youngest, of course. Danny is five years older than me, and Aaron is three years older than him. Now, that makes us eight years apart in line. <laughs> does, but I was going I'm just, in. just like saying how young he is. I was going in order here. So, uh, 
Danny, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, man? You've been on for a while. I have been. You know what? Time flies when you're just drinking whiskey and shooting the shit with strangers. Where yeah, I didn't know if you, I didn't, so you're just picking people out of the audience and that's it? Out of the audience. I like that. I think that's a good idea. Danny, where's your whiskey? I have a Coke Zero, unfortunately. I like to hold it and pretend I'm a giant. <laughs> it's one of those. It's one of those mini ones. So. Yeah. But I might get so, one later. It's Wing Wednesday at the bar down the street, so there's going to be. A I will in there. kind of fill some people in. Um, obviously we're all brothers. It's already been mentioned. We all play music. We have all played music together. Um. Quite a few of the of those years were spent playing music that we wish we could forget, I'm sure. But um, above and beyond that, Danny and I have played most recently together. In the regime, he is a phenomenal bass player. I mean, he can hit that four string like nobody's <laughs> business. Yeah, Aaron, no. Aaron, Aaron, your favorite brother? Who's my favorite brother? Are you or Aaron's? Uh, they're asking you. You don't have to answer. Aaron and I both know the answer. No, you um, got the right. Well, there's, there's, you know, I have no idea. It's hard to decide. Elon, was, Elon is your favorite brother. That's, oh, come you know, on. Well, we all, we all assume Elon's the favorite anyways, because he's the most talented. So, <laughs> so. All right. Uh, and I, I, I don't blame, you know, anyways, I don't blame anybody. Yeah, we've, We've all been um, musically inclined from very young ages. Uh, Danny was also, I mean, Danny, he probably started playing around 12. I recall my our dad getting him a short scale bass under the brand name Memphis. And then he felt that he was big enough for a big boy bass. So he got an Epiphone reminiscent <laughs> of what he was playing in early Guns N' Roses. But I will go ahead and say that... We all are multi-instrumentalists. I'm just the only one who decided to take it truly seriously. Yeah, okay. well, I'm, I'm probably the, I'm the worst musician of the three of us. You know, but it's, it's about applying yourself. I mean, Danny can downpick, palm mute like nobody's business on the guitar. And he can go ahead and hit that four string. And he can lay down a groove. But whatever, for whatever reason, I was the only one who actually cared about scales and different chords and rudiments and... Wait a second. You mean the Question actual instrument? Aaron. The actual Question for Aaron. Why does it seem like the vocals are kind of buried on the Dreamwalker? Well, Aaron, Aaron apparently has a, you know, some people have like deficiencies in frequencies in their ears. Apparently, they just don't boost vocals enough. Excuse me. Three people mixed on. Wait, on... This true. This is true. To Three Aaron, people mixed. To Aaron's defense, um, which I'm not. I'm not usually the first in line to, to do, but... Tom Ward Algie mixed a few songs. Alan Mulder mixed a few songs. Alan Mulder absolutely killed it. Yes. I yeah. think I did really, really well. Uh -huh. Even though I had, like, six days to mix five songs and they each had two weeks to mix one, you know. It is difficult with Tom because we do occasionally... I shouldn't say because I'm very... I'm very adept to following schedules but tom is not and there will be tracks being thrown around like oh shit we need to send this out for mastering uh on wednesday and this is sunday and then aaron's got to kind of burn the midnight I oil and why you get questions about that stuff i mean it's like that it's done it is done the music's but done think... listen to it you want to remix it remix it yeah Please, who wants to listen to tom's vocals anyways i've heard them by themselves in the garage and you sweat for this audience when you mix that stuff. Danny, yeah. someone said, Danny, I'm stoked you're teaching, man. You're very logical. Huh? Hey, hey fun fact here. Uh, yes. that most people on here might not know, but Danny is the actor in the family. <laughs> Danny actually played the bass player in Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan. That's correct. Hey that was Danny in that movie. Pink slip. What's up? And the best line of the entire movie was Danny's, which was, yup. That's, hey. that's classic. Hey, hey, you know what? Talent what is when you, script? Yeah. Talent is when you can deliver on the spot, you know? That's, yeah. Performing when it's required.
I, I agree. I mean, if your Instagram followers go through the roof right now, it's because some top secret information has been divulged. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, it's out there. It's out and there. I wrote Groundhog Day, according to IMDb. There you go. Danny Rubin wrote Groundhog Day and was in Freaky Friday, so I'm mm. had a good career. I have the same issue with all music. Hey, well, Darnell, since, by the way, yeah. obviously his name's Daniel Rubin. My, my fun name for him is Darnell. Yes. But anything you want to talk about since you're here, since I've roped you into this? No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's a really cool segment. I wish I would have caught the first part. I have, like, nothing to really add, unfortunately. I mean, but, you know, very similar questions from week to week. But... Denver Harbor songs. Oh, Denver <laughs> Harbor. I just listened to the ride the other day. That's some good Why drums, you... dude. Because I was just being nostalgic and listening to a lot of stuff. And so I, I, heard, I heard a Jimmy Eat World album, and that made me listen to Denver Harbor because it was the same producer. And then you I know, remember you talking about guitar tones in that studio, and I started laughing. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll get into this a little bit. So Aaron and I, our second band was a band called Denver Harbor, which I have really kind of put out of my mind because who gives a flying fuck? But it was a point in my life. I was in that band from 14 to 16 as a drummer, of course. Aaron was the bass player. And, of course, it was fun. It was my first experience really touring all over the U.S. It was my first time playing Japan. Uh, we did one album, but that band was literally my first taste of brutal reality, which is why I've often said that I had my first midlife crisis at 16. And it was very much a result of being signed to Universal with that band and dropped like eight months later. Love so I immediately felt the pain of like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? Fortunately, I felt that at 16, which is why it kind of veered me onto the, the right track, I should say. But Danny, and not that Mark Trombino is here watching by any means, but uh, he produced many albums in the early 2000s. I think he actually produced Duke Ranch, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true, Aaron? He what? D Trombino did Dude Ranch? And Bleed American. Bleed Ranch. Bleed American. Okay, so uh, a man of the time, for sure. Um, he actually has a... Uh, is it a donut, donut Shop? Donut Friend is his. Friend. Yes. So uh, I haven't seen him in, in quite a few years, but a very nice guy. But I didn't realize how rude it was at the time. Uh, I was, of course, 14, but I was baffled that he had somewhere around... 20 amps at least set up and he could just he couldn't find the guitar tone and very naive young Elon Rubin was like just let Danny do it he's the one who gets the sound in the garage all the time and Aaron looked at me like I had stepped on somebody's puppy like that's really rude to say to the producer but you know I didn't know better um I mean I think anyone should be able to find 20 amps up right but anyway that's the story Danny's talking about <laughs> 20 amps and like 20 amazing amps. Yes. Yes. And I was talking about Mike Fasano earlier, and that was actually the first time I actually got to work with him. So it was 2004, and we've been friends ever since. So, Danny, What's I know up? you got a lot. To, I know you both have a lot to do, but Danny, anything else you want to contribute to the conversation? God, I'd love to contribute. I just want to know why the light. What's up? Why is the light show not happening? The light show. I don't know how to flip this thing. Yeah, it, you know, I'll show it at some point on Instagram. But Danny, I don't know what don't... I can possibly add because when you do these things, they're so thorough. And mm. everybody that watches you asks such specific questions or redundant questions. I don't know what I could possibly add. It's But if you have anything to ask me or... Well, the apologies... Meanwhile, once your mad bass skills... Um, my mad bass skills. Let's see. Let's... He's pretty mad. I didn't take it seriously till Elon taught me how to play bass in the new regime. That is not true. Danny is no. Known... It is. You know what? That was the first time I had to learn scales, play with my fingers, sing at the same time. That is true. I mean, so. Danny. Danny was obviously always a good bass player, but I had a certain way of of playing bass. With uh, I mean, I I just played bass the way I play, which is very much a. John Paul Jones, Paul McCartney, love child. But 
Danny had to learn all those parts and he had the unfortunate task of having to do the harmonies as well, which is imagine being a, a like a, a one man band of sorts. As I'm recording these things, I'm certainly not thinking, what's it going to be like singing these very high harmonies, which I feel like Danny had to pinch his nuts to hit sometimes. Well, I'm sorry, by the way. Yeah. You know, but he had to learn those bass lines and learn those parts and do them both at the same time, which is not easy. So I and commend you. Know that you harmonies did. don't matter at all. That that version of talk 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 that you did with the Fender guitar, mm -hmm. I think that's your best vocal performance ever. Not one harmony, right? Well, Aaron was giving me shit for how poorly I recorded it. Wait, what? Uh, that that doesn't take away from the performance. You know, uh, brothers don't hold back. Um, but there you go. Uh, no, I just did a great job on that vocal, uh, on the vocal great, and stuff. And... Great vocal shit engineering. I mean, what do you want from me? There you go. I engineered that one. So. I know. But it's not, but it's great. Who cares what the engineering is like at the end? It sounds great. Well, thank well, you. you. I mean, Aaron. Aaron I, had to go, I had to go to town on it. Aaron polished it for me. But All right, anyway. So congratulations, Aaron. Elon. Better luck next time. Guys, if you're getting any sort of brotherly dynamic right here between the thin black line, that's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Attention to our 2030. What? The dudes 2030. in the bottom look like Elon when combined. <laughs> Team 22, if you just joined, we are all brothers, which is a hilarious. Someone asked me who your brother-in-law was. I said Bonzo. Bonzo. <laughs> uh, my parents have Bonzo, he's a horrible creature, but he's too smart for his own good. Anyway, brothers of mine, you're fantastic. I will let you go for now. I will, I will. Our 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 magic powers will have to come apart for the time being. Yeah. But but thank you for joining me. Sorry for putting you on the spot. No, it's and great. I will tie up Whiskey Wednesday here. Uh, by the Absolutely. way, the question about jeans is: I'm a Levi's guy. Levi's the Danny. The question isn't what kind of jeans, it's are jeans pants? Uh, jeans. Je Whatever fits, because it's hard to fit in anything. Jeans Je are pants. But they're not trousers. They're not trousers, but they are pants. Yeah. What are trousers? But it obviously depends on who you're asking, because I'm obviously answering from the American perspective. Oh, geez. If I was wearing as a British person, I would say that pants are, in not fact, underwear. What so, are trousers, by the way? I would call trouser more what us Americans would call dress pants. Call what? They had yeah. dress pants. So, you know, pants made out of uh, a finer fabric other than denim. Roger, you're wrong. Okay. All right. Well, well, guys, real pleasure. Thank you both for joining me. Yeah, have a great night. All right, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Hey, I, I finished uh, White Lotus. Man. You finished what? what? White Lotus. What did you yeah. think of it? I've never watched a show where I hate every single person on the show. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm watching I, Sex in the City. It's the same thing. Hey, Sex in the City is cool. They make they terrible, they did a good terrible job, decisions. Like... Yeah. I mean, that's just, uh, it's like one step forward and 12 steps back for women on that show. But it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All, All right. right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Uh, Get rid of me, because I don't know how to do this. Working on it. Okay, guys, that may be the only time all three Reuben men will be on. Uh, when I say Reuben men, I, I I didn't include my father, but I don't think he'd want to join. Can you wrap up? But uh, it's time to wrap up. Uh, it was a real pleasure speaking to you all. Uh, really quick question. Elon, do you approach 